In this session, I'm going to go over building the definition management screen. So this is how you define what sample data to accept whenever manually entered samples are entered. So for example, if I go to viscosity here, it will ask for or require the viscosity value, which will be an energy value, and the temperature value. Uh, these are the locations that it's appropriate to take that, that uh, viscosity samples. And whenever data is uh, automatically collected, the control limits are evaluated and the signals or rules uh, are evaluated. So this tells it what rules to evaluate and what control limits to evaluate. I can add a new um, definition. We'll just call it temp uh, for temperature. And we want to take uh, uh, two measurements for every sample. And then whether to auto approve it or not, um, we'll go ahead and select that. And there's temp. And then we can add here temperature. We want to collect the actual temperature value. It will be a real value. Here's the format. Maybe we want to allow over 100 degrees. Um, a default value, if you leave it blank, it will not put it in, but in, in uh, saving time for the operator, or lab technician, sometimes it makes sense to put a default value in right away. Um, and the minimum value and the maximum value, they work the same way. I'm gonna leave those blank. And we can see temperature goes in there. Now we want to define what locations it's appropriate to take this test. So um, I'm going to say the processing line. And again, you have whether you want to auto approve. And we can automatically schedule samples. Um, we'll get into that more later. I'm going to leave it as manual right now. And these values will, um, because it's manual, these really don't apply. And we'll go down um, and tell it to evaluate the X bar, lower control limit and upper control limit. And we'll take a look at Nelson rule three. So that's how you define a sample. So anytime, um, an operator lab technician enters in a sample based on this definition temp, it's going to use that data. So here you can save or cancel that, that entry. Because there's a lot of pop-ups and other windows associated with the uh, definition management screen, I'm going to just go over the existing uh, definition management screens in the demo. So I have the demo project loaded here. And if I go into the quality section, there's a basic definition management. And then we see definition, edit, attribute, things like that. Um, if you have the full demo, like what's up on our website, then there's you know, under demo windows, sample definition, we have the definition management, and we have the pop-ups there. So it's a little better organized. So I'm going to use this area so it will be a little bit clearer as I'm describing it. So I open up the definition management screen. And because of the recording resolution, we're going to have to scroll here around. This is actually very straightforward to do, this screen. Uh, this component here, if we go up on the quality tab, is this component. And you just drop it down on the screen. Uh, the attribute is the same way. Location, and then we have the control limits and signals. Now, each of these components, they're all table-based components. You can come in to the table customizer and select what columns you want to show and change other items about that. Um, so the demo, you can take a look at what's selected and, and uh, what to show. But if you put a new component down on the screen, 
you will have to go in and, and hide some of the columns. Uh, these components work together. So as I make selections here, these will automatically update. If I click viscosity, then the attributes for viscosity will uh, show here. Same with the locations, control limits, and signals. So you don't have to do any coding, any binding, anything to get those to work. You just put them on the same screen and at the same level. They can't, some of them can't be into a uh, container and some not. They all have to be at the same level. Next, we're going to take a look at um, dealing with adding the definitions and dealing with the pop-up. So if I select the definition list, right click, click event handlers, we see we have a edit sample definition category here and we have add, edit, and remove. So when you put script in here, those menu items will show up. So for add, it's pretty straightforward. We're just navigating to the pop-ups definition add and we can take a look at that the script for it that it created to do that so we're just navigating to this window and displaying it and then centering it with the edit is very similar to the same as the add only we're pulling up the definition edit to remove we can just say event dot set remove definition to one. So if you want other code in here, uh, maybe a verification message to pop up, are you sure, or you want some other item in here, uh, you can put it in this code before this line. This property change on that table just prevents us from navigating off the screen if we made some changes. So when we make changes to uh, a definition, it uh, has a modified field. Whenever that changes the script, this is where we're checking for that modified. Um, then we take a look at the new value of it. And if the new value is one, meaning we just modified it, then we're going to disable our next and previous buttons uh, along the top to prevent us from navigating. Then when, the mod, when it's actually saved, we click the Save button. The modified will go back to false, and we'll re-enable those buttons, allowing navigation. So now we'll take a look at the Definition Add screen. There's some script, pretty minor, um, when the internal frame is activated. And that script's pretty straightforward. All that it is doing is all the components on there, like the name field, it's blanking it out. The description field, the enabled. So it's just pre-setting these fields um, when the window opens up. So anytime we pop that window up by menu selection, um, it predetermines it. If we don't do that, then the last values will show up in there, and it's just not too, um, too user friendly. Then I come over here on the Save button, and we take a look at the code there. So we get the first thing we do is we're getting the name field, and we're making sure it's, it's not blank. If it is, we display a message. If it is not, then we create a sample definition. So this is the scripting function that creates a sample definition. Now we just simply are going to get all the fields. So we're going to set the name. Here we had the uh, description field. We're going to set the description, uh, the enabled, how many measurement counts. And we're just, it also accepts some other default items that we're just going to hard code to some values here instead of having a more complicated entry screen for adding a sample. So once we've set all the values, so we created a sample definition, we set all the values based on what the user inputted, then we're going to get the definition list component off of the screen. That's what these two lines do. And then that component, we're just simply going to say component.add sample definition and that sample definition that we created up here. And we just added a new sample definition. 
Now it's also important to note, this is in, you know, accepting the data in the screen. But you can use these script functions the same way. So you could create a new sample definition and wherever in whatever script, create a sample definition, set the information, and then add it. And you don't even have to have a, a screen behind it and with entry fields. So it's, they're used here, and you can also use them in, in other ways. Edit uh, definition works the the uh, identically. The one change or two changes is here we're calling instead of add sample definition, we're calling update sample definition. That's the only difference there. And when we bring up the window the first time, we actually go out and get the sample definition here. So we get the definition list, we get the sample definition, which is the currently selected one, and then the entry fields on the screen we set so that when you edit, the, pr the existing settings are uh, displayed on the screen. Go back to our de uh, definition management. If we take a look at attributes, we have the same thing, right click, events, we have add, edit, and remove. Again, we're just pulling up a screen the attribute add. Um, one slight difference is we're going to pass the attribute name over to the attribute edit screen so it knows which attribute we selected. And then the remove works the same way. Uh, event dot set remove attribute. The same way as the definition was removed. So attribute add, there, there's the uh, script when the window comes up that just initializes all the entry boxes. I won't go through that again. And when you add, again, the same kind of, of uh, process that we go through here. It's slightly different, but the same concept. So we create a new attribute. We set all the parameters for it and then we get the component we get the sample definition here and then we add that attribute to the sample definition and then the refresh causes um, the screen to the sample definition and the attribute list and all that to update to reflect the newly added uh, attribute Edit attribute works in that same way. Locations, we look at that event handler, same thing, we're just pulling up another uh, location add, and uh, same thing, we get the location parameter here, which is the ID to the location, and then we display that window and pass that parameter exact same way to remove it, remove, set remove location. We take a look at the location add screen. The script to initialize it is there again. So we're getting the uh, sample definition and then we are uh, displaying that location information there. If we add on the add button here, again, it's going to work the same way. We're getting a new location here. We pass it the ID and the selected location name. Then we set the properties for that sample location. We get the sample definition here. And then we add an allowed location to that sample definition. So you can see the definite pattern here of how all of these uh, work, and they're very, very similar. On this screen also, we have a, a label that 
pops up and says, oh, you have to save, you should save or cancel your changes. So that appears, we'll go to the visibility property here. That appears when the definition list modified property is true. So we just bind that visibility to the mod, uh, definition list modified and it will appear anytime there's a change made uh, to you know a new definition or attribute or what have you is added. So that gives a brief overview of how it all ties together. You can take a look at the documentation for the, exist, uh, the specific scripting functions and you also refer to the demo project um, and take a look at how it is done.